you are such a beautiful sight to behold. I am the happiest and more privileged human being that could be on this earth by being here and having this honor of presenting to you the UC San Diego Peer Counseling Program, Peer Education Program. I want you to know that uh, I have great love for this country of Japan. I have this, this great love for Japan that was instilled by my daughter that is here today. And with that, I have learned to love every detail of the, of the culture of, of each one of you. And, uh, and with that, uh, I want then to, to let you know that I will be available at any point to talk about uh, our program in San Diego. I want you to know that today I am not going to be talking about the scholarship of being a peer counselor. And uh, I am not going to be talking either about peer counseling or peer coaching. I'm going to be focusing in peer psychoeducation programs. And, and that uh, is going to be important because you will have the chance to, to engage in communication about the other forms of peer-to-peer -peer work. I'm going to start by sharing with you about the UC system and sharing with you, introducing you UC San Diego. I'm going to then talk about the peer program and the relationship it has with the mission of the university and the counseling center. I will also share with you the relationship that it has with the well-being of the students. And I will also share with you some of the challenges and what can make it flourish. So the University of California, I hope that one day you come over and visit. It is the number one public university in the United States. It has 10 campuses, and some of them you might know well, like UC Berkeley, UCLA, and I am right there, UC San Diego. So UC San Diego uh, is a very young university. It's only in the mid 50 years old, like, like 55 years old right now. It was born out of the ocean with the Institute, a Scripps Institute of Oceanography. And uh, Something very important is that because of that birth, we like to make waves. And making waves is very important to us because we like to dive into subjects with all our passion. And for that, we like to use our imagination and we also like to have fun because UC San Diego is the number one surfing school in the United States. Also, we like a little bit of mischief and chaos because we like to break things down. But we like to break things down so that we can make breakthroughs in every single area from the sciences to the humanities. And you can see this in our architecture. This is our library. And this is our engineering park. And there is a house that landed on top of one of the buildings. And this one is part of the Stuart co Collection, our art, and it's called The Fallen Star by Do Hosu. And it is a beautiful piece for many of us because it represents the disorientation that many of us have when we arrive in the United States for the first time. So that's a house where I cannot go inside, but maybe some of you will. So I cannot go inside that house because I will be so motion sick, so dizzy and disoriented that only few can enter there. You have to have a good inner ear. So having said that, our, our design is like Cambridge and Oxford in England. So we are composed right now of six colleges and a seventh is going to be being built pretty soon. And we, we have many graduate programs and professional schools. And I am very happy to see so many students here because our reason to exist is for the students. And 
we, we are there to ensure that students have a successful career in the university toward their professional goals. And to, for that, counseling and psychological services have been created so that we can support the academic success of the students and their personal development. We have 23 psychologists, three psychologists, psychiatrists, and we have two social workers and six postdoctoral residents. So I better repeat, it's lovely. So, so we have 23 psychologists, three psychiatrists, two social workers, and six postdoctoral residents. And our student population is uh, nearing 36,000 students. Our staff believes in diversity, equity, and inclusion. And we like to be cutting edge. So that's what I like to be here in the University of Tokyo. You are cutting edge. We also like to train the next generation of psychologists. So I want to introduce you to our class of postdoctoral residents, because maybe any one of you that is studying psychology might want to come and train with us. And this, this person here, she is our postdoctoral resident that is working with the peer-to-peer -peer programs. Now I want to introduce you to the team that runs the peer-to-peer -peer program at UC San Diego. So here we have the founder, she is the creator, but just like a child that has grown up, she has to give it to these two new coordinators. And now meet our peer educators. And something that I want you to pay attention is the child that you see in the picture. Because our peer education program is alive. So you will see the child growing up and it keeps getting older, and if you notice, she's no longer in her mother's arms. And uh, with that, we cannot do it alone. That's why I want to introduce you a national program, which is Active Minds. My hope is that Active Minds is, is also international, because you could join it if you wanted. Active Minds has uh, many programs that are carried all over the United States. Nonetheless, our peer educators like to turn them into their own. And here I want to introduce you a very special program that is Pinwheels. And this one is a suicide prevention program. As colorful as it is, there are 1,100 pinwheels. Every year in the United States, 1,100 students die by suicide. But part of suicide prevention is also focusing on wellness, on well-being. So during final exams, we need to remind the students what do they need to do to take care of themselves. Also, another movement in California that we all part, and I love it when green is, is the color of the peer program here also, is called Each Mind Matters. And, and that one is to reduce the stigma of any mental condition. And that's one of the beauties of the peer-to-peer -peer programs, because when students can start talking about their mental conditions, then it becomes something that doesn't need to be hidden anymore. So having said that, a peer-to-peer -peer program has to fit within the vision and mission of a university. And at UC San Diego, we really want to make all our programs student centers, from our educational programs to our student affairs programs to anything that is going to advance their development as a whole person. And the same thing when it comes to counseling and psychological service, we want our services to address the mental health needs of the individual students 
and the community, and that's where the peer-to-peer -peer programs play a very important role. A very harmonious and wonderful movement happens because at CAPS, the professionals train the peer educators, and the peer educators go out into the community and they reach very closely the lives of the students. So we are learning as we teach. And for the students, this is a pathway to their destiny, to their calling, because many of our peer educators later on go into mental health professions, healing professions, or even business profession, but they will be smarter with a higher emotional intelligence and therefore more successful. The beauty is that while the peer educators invest in themselves, they also make things happen out there and the community all flourish together also. Our focus is on the student well-being because we know that studies have shown how important is positivity, positivity in emotions, positivity in relationships, positivity in activities that we engage in for our success. That's what I wanted to share with you today, the definition of well-being from the World Health Organization. Because the peer educator and the students that they connect with can develop their own strength and they also know how to manage better the stress that uh, everyday life brings to them. I love very much uh, in the University of Pennsylvania the work of Martin Seligman, and I will invite you to visit his website, Authentic Happiness, because he talks about the good life. Because the good life is really made out of the simple things of life that we can enjoy every day, like a delicious cup of green tea. Mm -hmm. Also, it is based on us being interconnected with each other and engagement with our community. It is also grounded in creating meaning for our lives, a sense of purpose and having a sense of accomplishment. All of that is very important, and that's something that the peer-to-peer -peer program brings to themselves and to the students. In this way, we can all overcome the hardships of life much better, and we can flourish under very stressful circumstances, because we know like UC San Diego is a very challenging school. And the peer-to-peer -peer program made the counseling center stronger. They are a great support for us because they can go places that we couldn't. And we can reach more students because of them. So the peer effect on campus is really powerful because they help us then for students to learn about what is needed to maintain a blossoming mental health. And they also engage in good lifestyles. So it is success for all. So now I want to start telling you a little bit more details about the peer educators. I'm going to start by sharing with you our staffing. So you met the mother of the girl that grew up, and she is now the manager of the, of the two peer coordinators. And the two peer coordinators are the ones who run the program. It, it starts by developing the team and their leadership skills, because that's one of the gifts of the peer program, that it prepares them to be the leaders of tomorrow. And you made the postdoctoral resident. And then we have one peer coordinator that manages and helps with the programming of the peer program, and two others that assist this person who are also peer educators, but they also have a higher role as a staff, and they are paid positions. We are very fortunate that we have various sources of funding, 
but the main one is that student services fees. We are very blessed also that we get grants and awards. The, the biggest reward was when our peer-to-peer -peer program was recognized as a, a model for the United States. This is after they participated in a peer conference of all the UC system and they were recognized there and they were very happy because remember we can be silly and we can have fun also. I want you to know that all the programs that we run are intentional and based on what we know about the trends of the students on campus and the United States. One of the recognized impediments to academic success has been stress, number one, and sleep, not being able to sleep, number two. So many of our programs will, will focus on stress management. And this one that I present here is called Sweet Dreams. And it is uh, for addressing the sleep disorders that students face on campus. And in the past, we would say, well, no, you're not sleeping, so what? But a lot of research on, on sleep has illuminated how important sleep is for human beings. From regulating our immune system to consolidating what we have learned that day. So we, we focus a lot on helping a student get sleep. When we develop a program like Sweet Dreams, we ensure that there are learning objectives, things that we want the students to learn when they have completed the program. And we also have learning objectives for the peer educators so that they know how they have grown in their outreach to the community. I want you to know that we also have other programs like Caring for Yourself, Stress Management 101, because other of the impediments to the academic performance of students is interpersonal relationship problems. We also have programs where we communicate love to others and appreciation in relationships. We do not do our work alone, as I said before. We partner with the zone that is part of the cluster of student health and well-being. So they train their students on how to give chair massages to remove the stress. And while the students get their stress removed through the massage, our peer educators uh, engage the students in biofeedback to manage stress. And because we are an academic center, we also like the students to go to conferences where they can present their work. With the son, they also have a program called Therapy Fluffies. And studies have shown that petting wonderful domesticated dogs uh, can make the students uh, more relax. We do not have a newsletter, but together with the cluster of student health and well-being, we have a student health 101, and our peers can write articles in it. We also like to join national organizations like the American Foundation of Suicide Prevention, and with them, once a year, we walk for raising awareness and prevent suicide. Another thing that we do in annual basis is, is one of my favorite programs, and it is called National Depression Screening Day. And this one is a teamwork. In this program, the psychologists work with the peer educators hand in hand. And while the peer educators are at the front, getting the students to fill their screening inventory for depression. The psychologists are um, in the woods talking one-on-one -on -one with the students that participate. Of course, that our students love crispy donuts 
and we give them crispy donuts after they have completed that survey. They are delicious. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And uh, they also like the stress balls to squeeze them. So, so here we have the setup where all the surveys are. So it's different stations. And here you see the peers again. It looks like all they do is to have fun, right? <laughs> so there they are. Here we have the students filling the surveys. And in this one, the students are, are scoring, the peers are scoring the surveys. And here is one of my colleagues talking with one of the students that just completed the survey. I want you to know that all students get one-on-one -on -one with a psychologist. If the students did well in the screening tool, then we tell them, good job, keep doing what you are doing. You are doing terrific. But if they score with a rating that let us know that they are depressed, then we ask them to come and visit CAPS. So here we have the peer educators, and here we have the psychology that participated that day. And as always, afterwards, we present the work in a conference so that they can put it in their resume also. All our programs are evaluated by the students because that allows us to know if we are succeeding or if we need to change the program. And so far, we have been doing fine, if you notice, with the blue and the red bars across all the questions in the survey. And for the peer educators, at the end of the program, we also ask them how was their experience, because we need to have their feedback also. And as was I saying earlier, all of them say that it has enhanced their personal, academic, and professional life to be a peer educator. They said that it has included their public speaking skills, their planning and organization, and their ability to work in collaboration. So how do we get this wonderful team of peer educators? In, in April, which is going to be in a couple of months, we are going to start our recruitment phase. Our peer educators play a very important role, just like uh, in the United States, when somebody is applying for medical school and got accepted, their peers begin to call them because the competition is so fierce that they want to make sure that that good student will come to their university. So the peer educators go everywhere, to every organization, to classes, wherever they know that talent will be there, and they invite students to apply. Their, their training is very intense in the beginning, they have a whole day where they are going to work on team building and they are going to learn about what entails to be a peer educator. Then we have different trainings that happen each quarter because UC San Diego is in the quarter system. We have 10 weeks and then the quarter is over and another one begins. And you have in your uh, handout example of how the training progresses. And I would be happy at other time to share more in detail how, how it is. But uh, uh, some of the programs then is going to be around academic success strategies. They get trained on mindfulness for stress management. Then in the following quarter, there is additional training. And with the training, there is also another hour of supervision for those that have been de delivering programs. So every week, it would be one hour and a half of training plus one hour of supervision when the students are delivering a program. So we, we are going to be entering soon the last quarter, and the last quarter is dedicated to do the outreach programs in the community and to also help us recruit the new peer educators for the following year. 
And the peer education program is never static. We are always changing according to the needs of the time. So this summer, we are going to be very busy because we are going to be working on developing new workshops for the flourishing initiatives. So what else do they do? They do many things. They participate in the committees where students give feedback and they have the opportunity to advise the staff about what direction we should be taking to, to better take care of their well-being. And when it's time to have our accreditation visit, we invite them so that they can share their experience in the program. So they really partake with the evolution of counseling and psychological services. I changed my mind and I'm going to tell you about one program that is very dear to me and is here. Supporting peers who elect Tao. The part of me that loves technology loves Tao. Because Tao is a program online to help students overcome anxiety. Students can do the program on their own, but studies have shown that there is a better outcome when the students feel supported so that they can study the modules one at a time. So we will be engaging the support of the peer program so that they can support those students who, who elect to manage their anxiety by learning cognitive behavioral therapy with the Tao. So the sky is the limit, but we have to also talk about the challenges we face. One of the challenges is the budget. Where will, where will the money come from? Then another one is the staffing. How, much, how many of the staff you will want to invest in supporting the peer educators, because as you know, uh, I, I invest a lot of the staff time. We have, in reality, four psychologists that work in the program, even when it is not full time. Another challenge is how much time do we have to, do we want to invest in, in the program, because it requires the training, the supervision, uh, and activities for team building. Uh, such as going for one day and, and participate in, in climbing a rope course together. So then we have simple programs, problems that can feel big, like a storage space, because we have a lot of stuff. We have to store the canopies. We have to store the giveaways. Then we have to make sure that we are not duplicating services, because we need to put our energy on what is needed and new. And how are we going to market the program? I need to share with you that in the beginning, we develop a program, we will market it, and sometimes we will have only like three students attending the program. And that was challenging because it was a lot of energy invested in that program. So what we decided to do is that now we go out by invitation only, but we get a lot of invitations. And how to make the program, the peer education program, part of the strategic planning. And how to always be ahead of what is happening so that we ensure the future of the peer education program. So, but it's working. And again, you know, it began many months ago, and when I started to work in 1988. So what does it take? It takes to believe in the program, to have passion, the energy for it, to make sure that it is a priority so that resources go into it, so that we value teamwork and collaboration also. Because when I tell you that now we go out by invitation only, is because we have developed the connections with the campus community so that they can invite us for us to deliver the programs. It has to be also intentional so that we are always studying the trends, doing needs assessment so that we deliver a product that is needed in the university at that time. And in conclusion there, it needs a lot of generativity because uh, it is giving a lot of ourselves to others. So prospection is uh, what are the possible futures 
and I want to leave you with that because you all come from different places, different university colleges with different resources, and one size doesn't fit all. As I said before, for some places, peer counseling is very helpful. In our case, we don't need it at this time because we also have text lines and hotlines that uh, have removed for us the need of having peer counselors by phone. So I want to leave you saying, where is my passion? What is the need of the students, of my peers in my university, in my campus? And uh, what am I willing to give to others? Because I do not have to chase extraordinary moments to find happiness. It's right in front of me when I am paying attention and practicing gratitude. So I want to thank you for allowing me to be here in front of you today. Thank you. Thank you.